The discussion that we've just done has raised some aspects of coloring, which I want to talk about just a little bit. We won't go too deeply into this. Okay, the first is the notion of an online coloring. There's nothing more real than an online problem. I've tried to go to my investment banker and said, you know, that investment that we made six months ago, I, I really didn't mean that. Can we take the money out of that and, and kind of backdate it and put it over there instead? I really wish I had bought Apple at the right time and sold my Polaroid stocks at the right moment. I wish I had hopped on the Google bandwagon. Can, can we go back? No, 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 no. It doesn't work that way in the real world. You made your choices, and you live with them. And so there's lots of real-world applications that that's what you're dealing with. Information comes to you in a piecemeal fashion, and what happened yesterday stays. Make your decisions for today and move on. And so graph coloring in an online setting can be viewed as a kind of a two-person game. And there's lots of ways to you can even do this. You can even agree on the graph in advance. And say, OK, here's the graph, but I'm going to give it to you one vertex at a time. So suppose two persons play with that graph. One person builds the graph, and the other one colors the graph. How many colors does it take for the color? We just did it. It takes three. It takes three. Here's how. The builder puts down a vertex. Excuse me. The builder puts down a vertex, and the color colors it. I'm going to say the color colors it color alpha. Then the builder puts down another vertex and says, this vertex is not adjacent to the first one. That's your information. Now color it. What does the colorer do? Not, the color is not constrained to use first fit. The color can be much more clever, do anything that they want. So the builder says, you either do this or you do that. You might assign the new vertex the same color. If you do that, I'm going to do one thing. You might assign the new vertex a different color. And in that case, I'm going to do something different. You buy my Google stock, Google is going to tank. You don't buy my Google stock, it's going to go up. See, I've always understood that there's an intimate connection between buying and selling high and low. But my track history is I get confused which goes with which. That's my joke for the day. Not a very good one. Okay. All right. So what does the this is what the builder did and that's what the colorer did. What does the builder do next? The builder says, I'm going to give you a vertex that's adjacent to this one, but not that one. And now the colorer has to assign a color to this vertex, which is not alpha. So that's some beta. And on the next move, the builder completes building the path by putting this guy in. And he's adjacent to both an alpha and a beta. And now the colorer has to use a third color. But you might help me out. You might start by putting different colors on those two vertices. Now what do I do? I put one right here. 
and say it's adjacent to both of them. Now you have to use the gamma. And then on my last move, I put it over there. I don't care what you do. You've already used the three colors. So is it clear that even if you agree in advance that the graph at the end of the day is going to be a path on ver four vertices, the colorer needs three colors. Two will work offline, but online it takes three. So it might be the case that online you can force one more color. Let's show you can force as many as you like without ever even building a cycle. Let's show that I can force you to use lots and lots of colors, and I will build you a forest. That's kind of strange, isn't it? If you could see the whole thing, two colors. But you can't see it. You don't know what's coming. I'll show you how to do it. This is kind of cute. I like this. All right. Tell me what color you want to put there. Tell me what color you want. Yeah, you. Blue, he says. Blue. All right? I'm going to play against all of you. It doesn't matter what you do. You're going to lose. All right? I put down another vertex, and it's not adjacent to the first one. What color? B, again. B, B for blue. Okay? Now I'm going to put down another vertex, and <clears throat> this one is adjacent to that one, but not to that one. What color would you like? Yeah, see, he says red. Okay, you can't say blue. That, that would be, that would be, okay. He says red. Okay? You might get called on, so you better pay attention. I'm now going to put down another vertex, and it's not adjacent to anything I've done. What color would you like? What color would you like? Yellow? Okay, she didn't have to do that, but she did. I mean, she used a third color. It could have said red or blue, but, but she's, she's trying to get freedom later. She's pay an early price and, and get some freedom. Uh, that's yellow. Okay, now I'll put down another vertex. Uh, what color would you like? Blue. All right. I'll put down another vertex. What color would you like? Red. Okay. I'll put down another vertex. What color would you like? Green. Okay. All right. Now, here, I first, I forced a vertex with a color just by putting it down. Here are two colors. Mark one of them, which is different from that one, this one. I got really lucky here. I was trying to force a third color, but it didn't take much because she said yellow. Okay. Now, over here, I was trying to force a fourth color, and you gave it to me quickly. That was green. Now, you want to see me force a fifth color? So if I can get a certain number of different colors and I get them in different places in different components, then I can link them together with a new vertex and force you to use one more color. So that's where I get my fifth. 
But now that's that's a proof. Okay, let's let's sketch it like this. Is there a strategy for forcing one color? Yeah, do something. Is there a strategy for forcing two colors? Okay, put down two. Is there a strategy for forcing three colors? Yes. Cover this up and start over again from scratch. Put down one. Put down two. And you get a color here and you get a color here that are different. And add somebody that's adjacent to the different ones. So if, if whatever, whatever is the, the two different ones, add somebody adjacent to that. And that's how you get three. So if you want to get four, there's one here. There's two here. So one of them is not that one. There are three here. So one of them is not that one or that one. Now to force four, I now just do this. How do you want to do five? Start over again from scratch. Force one. Force two. Force three. Force four. Add one, and you get five. So that's induction. You can force any number of colors you want and never make a cycle. So online coloring can be hard. Here is a challenge for you. Suppose we played the following game. I give you a big tree, and we take a box of crayons, and together, you and me, we color this tree. Each time we, alter, I mean, we alternate turns, I color one, then you color one, then I color one, then you color one, and we go back and forth. And each time you reach into the box of colors, and you pull out, and you say, OK, I'll color this one red. And then you, my turn, I say, OK, I'll color this one green. And there's, we're playing it in, in Wembley Stadium in front of a crowd of 80,000 cheering fans. And you can't cheat. So when you color, it's got to be a legal color. OK, but now privately, you're trying to get this tree colored. And privately, I'm trying to mess it up. <laughs> How many colors do you need so that you can't lose? 